Hi, Myra. Hello. How are you? Glad <laughs> know, I'm glad good. That you're, uh, you got your audio issues figured out, man. That yeah. brain talk was awesome. Cool. Yeah, it was. And I expect nothing less than that. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay. Well, hopefully I can wow some folks here. Take All right. Away. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Myra. See you soon. Hi, everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, my name is Isaac Levin. I'm a senior product marketing manager at Microsoft. I focus on developer tools and tooling in a way to accelerate how we can better innovate on Azure. I love to tell stories. You can find me on GitHub, Twitter, and Twitch talking about all sorts of fun things. So I wanted to just, before we started talking about all the cool things with .NET and Actions and Azure, I wanted to do a little bit of a history lesson, right? So in the beginning, well, not really. How did we get apps to production before that whole CI CD thing became the thing you had to do or you got shunned off the face of the earth, right? I asked a Twitter uh, question a few days ago and some of the results I got were pretty fun, right? So first off, everybody used to copy and paste, right? Or if you were fancy, you would FTP or maybe you'd build some really convoluted solution that would do some scripting and deploying using um, SSH or what have you, right? Still talking about manual processes. And then tools started to show up that kind of automated, but not really. Does anybody remember cruise control? I remember cruise control. Cruise control was one of the first introductions to DevOps or CI CD that I saw in my career. And I thought it was really, really interesting how you could do one click to build publishing, not even having to worry about, you know, things on people's machines and all that sort of terrible, terrible stuff that we have to deal with. Um, and then you had tools like Hudson show up. Hudson, if you don't know, eventually turned into this tool called Jenkins, right? Well, it's not really quite the truth. Hudson separate the open source concepts in Hudson separated and Jenkins was created from that. And then finally, we start to see these more complete CICE tools, tools that are more deeply integrated with your um, Git or your code repositories, things like Octopus Deploy, and then the artist currently known as Azure DevOps Server, Azure DevOps, Visual Studio Online, Visual Studio Team Services, Team Foundation Server, right? One place where you had all of your code, the things that built your code, and the configuration you needed to get your code to your production endpoints. Now we have a new thing. It's called GitHub Action. So a lot of people ask me, Isaac, what exactly is a GitHub Action? You talk about it a lot. Can you please just give me a real quick rundown? Well, GitHub Action is a YAML powered workflow linked to your Git repositories, yet another markup language powered. So uh, I know people have some concerns with YAML. Um, I had some concerns with YAML. I like YAML now. Um, not as much maybe as some other uh, markup languages, but I definitely can work pretty seamlessly in YAML now after spending some time in it. These workflows are actually triggered a handful of different ways. They can be triggered by uh, GitHub webhooks. Um, you can actually schedule them, or you can manually click a run my GitHub action directly from the GitHub UI. When the workflows run, they actually run on what's called a runner, funny enough. So uh, runners come in two forms. You can have GitHub hosted or self-hosted. Um, the GitHub hosted ones are awesome because they come in a slew of different operating systems. So Windows, Ubuntu, or Mac OS, and they have a ton of pre-installed software, including a handful of versions of the .NET Core SDK, which I think is pretty awesome. Actions when they run, they generate logs, like basically everything else on the planet. Those logs are available directly in the GitHub portal. So you can actually see the results of your build right there in line with your code, which I think is pretty valuable. And then finally, the, the one of the greatest things that I see from GitHub Actions is that it's a, there's a slew of custom workflows that have been built by the community and organizations like, Azure, like the Azure team to come up with every different scenario that you can think of. So then you can use them as building blocks when you build out your workflows for your particular applications. So we're here to talk about .NET, right? We're at .NET Comp. If I started talking about any other programming languages, people would blast me on Twitter and I don't want that. So 
what, how do we get our .NET apps you know, wired up with actions? So, like I said earlier, there's a GitHub action for that. It's called setup.net. So what does setup.net actually give you? It gives you a .NET CLI environment in, on your runner. So when you configure it, you have that version that you specify, which you can specify previews. I know we're talking about .NET 5 uh, at .NET Conf. .NET 5 is super awesome. It's GA now. But I know a lot of people here are probably going to be, well, when's my .NET 6 coming out? Uh, we know it's coming out next year. And when previews start to flow in, obviously, you're going to be able to take advantage of developing with them. And you can use GitHub Actions and the setup.net action workflow to specifically specify that .NET 6 preview all the way through, right? So to give you a little bit of uh, fun things to play with as you're building out to 6. But let's focus on 5 because I think 5 is super awesome. You also have the ability to configure your environment to use uh, private package sources. So for instance, if you have your packages hosted on NuGet or GitHub packages, Azure DevOps artifacts, you can leverage them in a secure way using GitHub Actions. So we're talking about Actions, what they are. We talked about all the different, like the ways that you can set up .NET in your runners. Where can I deploy to? Well, I work for Microsoft. I work in the Azure team, so I'm going to talk about some of the cool thing, ways we can deploy to Azure. Obviously, you can deploy to App Service. App Service is the platform as a service offering that exists uh, in Azure. It's awesome. We're going to talk about that in more detail in a little bit. You can also deploy to Azure Functions, the new fancy Azure Static Web Apps, which is now support Blazor and .NET 5, Azure Kubernetes Service, which I'm not going to talk about because I really don't know Kubernetes that well full stop. And then you can really, you know, de deploy anywhere else, right? If you want to deploy to a VM, or if you want to deploy to storage, or if you want to deploy to frankly anywhere, GitHub Actions allows you to be able to do that. So I'm going to go through some of the different scenarios where it makes sense to deploy to some of these different things. So when do we want to deploy to app service? So when you have a traditional web application with a front end, or if it's an API, Razor Pages, MVC, Web API, Server Side Blazor, for instance, you know, it's a good a good idea to take a look at App Service. Uh, if you want scalable production workloads that can be high performance or even dedicated in Azure, App Service is a really good option there. Uh, when you want more control over the uh, environment or the config of uh, being able to configure it, but you don't want the whole VM, you don't want the whole operating system, you can fully take advantage of app service because it has rich is rich feature sets like slots and vnet support and azure active directory and tons and tons and tons of integrations built into it which i think is super super awesome so i wanted to show you how easy it is to get set up uh, with github actions um, and app service on vs code so like brady hinted brady wrote like this really 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 cool uh api um, using Swagger and all this cool stuff. I would love to be able to deploy that out to Azure. I'm inside of Visual Studio Code with the new super .NET theme. I think it's super awesome. Everybody should go and take a look at it. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because it looks a little small for me. But what I wanna do is actually want to deploy out. So if I just bring up the command palette in Visual Studio Code, I had this super awesome deploy to Azure which is an extension to Visual Studio Code, which allows you to configure a CI CD pipeline there. I click OK. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to get um, my pat. Don't steal my pat. One second, everybody. Oh, uh, where'd it go? Sorry, everybody. Too many windows open. Don't steal it, please. I'm going to delete it in... 20 minutes anyway. So this is going to analyze your repository, and then it's actually going to ask, what do you want to deploy to? So I choose a simple app service. I choose my subscription. I choose the, the resource that I want to deploy to. And then it's going to actually build out a template GitHub action. And from that point, like it creates a workflow file. It creates that YAML. So this particular action, like it doesn't really do much, right? Because it's just a template. Um, you know, it can also scaffold out a bunch of different things in here. I'm going to actually take one of the ones that I have already. So, and then I'll walk through exactly what I'm doing a little bit. So I just copy and paste it from a different window to this window. So, um, there is some magic going on here, 
But you know, I want to talk really, really quickly what I'm doing. So these are some environment variables that I'm configuring here. As you can see, right, I'm using the new .NET Core 5 um, or .NET 5, sorry. I'm specifying some paths. Uh, the, the first thing that I do is I say, okay, this is going to run on the latest version of Ubuntu because I do have the ability to run on different runners. I'm going to set up the .NET Core SDK. I'm going to restore my packages. I'm going to build my app. I'm going to publish my app. And then I'm going to use a uh, an action that's actually provided by the Azure team called Web Apps Dash Deploy. This allows you to deploy to app service. All you need is the name of the app in Azure, the package that you that you're deploying, which is your built code, and the publishing profile, which you store in a GitHub secret. So GitHub secrets basically allows you to store your secure secure uh, configuration settings inside the Azure portal, which you can then lever lev lev yeah you can uh, leverage in your workflows. Got a little bit tongue tied there, but that's just not it. After we deploy the application, there's one thing that we got to do that Brady showed a little bit earlier. So we actually want to set up API management, which we can do inside of the workflow itself as well. So you install a swashbuckle CLI global tool. I publish the application again, making sure that um, I'm leveraging the current bits. And then I'm running the Swagger CLI to generate a Swagger JSON file. And then I run some Azure CLI command to actually import into API management that Swagger file. And then once I save this, it gives me the ability to, I'm just going to say, uh, add an action. So when I actually save this and commit it, it's going to kick off that particular runner. And I'm going to show you on a different, um, show you in a second what that actually looks like. So if I just bring this over, Let's just go to 11, my GitHub portal. Let's go to resources, check the time. I got like 10 minutes left. And then you can see that a folder was created called GitHub workflows. And inside there is that GitHub action that I added. So you can actually see here, I can see all the fun stuff that's going on. So I added an action. This is gonna take a little bit of time. So we're gonna take a look at it later. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to get back to the deck, right? So obviously I can deploy to app service, but you know, there's tons of other options for you to deploy. What about Azure Functions, right? If you don't know what Azure Functions are, they're these small stateless tasks that you can run inside of Azure, um, you know, using this serverless um, uh, hot buzzword, right? You can have stateful functions or durable functions if you want them. Uh, so you do have the ability to run, you know, some more complex scenarios if you do. If app infrastructure really doesn't matter for your application, like I said, if you're running some tasks that are moving one thing to another or some automation thing, um, the Actions is a great option for you. Uh, actions, you know, lives and dies by this concept of event-driven architecture where you have things that trigger your application and things that your application is binded to. So like, for instance, non-HTTP things, like if you have... Uh, blobs being dropped in a uh, Azure storage container and a bunch of other different things. One of the best things about Azure Functions is they can be extremely cost effective. I put an asterisk in there um, because they can get less not expensive um, if you take advantage of um, some more, um, I guess, scalable workloads. Like if you want to use um, app service environments, or you want to use app service plans, you know, there, there, it is it, not cheap all the time, but it's definitely cheap if you have, you know, tasks that you're running, you know, based on the, the, some of the pricing, right? So if you want to learn how to use Visual Studio to be able to deploy to GitHub Action, that's super, super easy. So I'm going to open my solution here. And I have just a simple Azure function, right? Like there's nothing really like super... You know, this is just a regular Azure function that does a weather forecast. We've all seen this weather forecast demo. I'm going to show you how easy it is in Visual Studio to deploy this to Azure. So I go to publish, and I know what you're thinking, but Isaac, this is a DevOps talk. You're not supposed to right-click publish. I know the DevOps folks um, would probably get on me, but what if I told you, to quote my friend Abel, we could right-click publish the right way and do the right thing. So I'm going to right click and publish and click on Azure, Azure Functions and Windows. And then I'm going to specify my particular 
Azure function. And then I have this cool new thing, publish automatically using GitHub Actions, generates workflow file. But what do you mean, Isaac, generates workflow? Well, what I mean is, is that it does just that. It generates a workflow file. So if I go in here and take a look, it detects that I'm running a GitHub Action, and then it deploys to GitHub Actions. So, you know, what does that actually mean though? So like it's building.net, it's doing that. Let me just move that over, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. I can make windows open. There we go, there we go. So as you can see here, right, uh, you're specifying a handful of things. You specify the .NET Core version, uh, um, Azure Functions run on 3.1 of .NET Core right now. I imagine that might change sometime in the future. I don't know any timelines, so don't say I said them. Um, you specify all the different things that you want to run. And then, you, like again, you provide that uh, publishing profile and the package and so forth, right? Um, so I'm going to commit this. I'm going to stage that. Add another function. I'm going to commit and stage that. I spelled function wrong. Oh, well. So while that's kicking off, let's get back to the slides. So finally, there's one other really, really cool option, and that option is static web apps. So static web apps allows you to um, have a, uh, a front end deployed, or static site, as you will, uh, that you know allows you to have a, a full feature rich environment and that consumes an API. So static web apps is super, super awesome. So when would you use static web apps? When you don't need a server at all. And there's one particular scenario that .NET um, really, really cares about that I think would be a great option. Blazor WebAssembly. We all know Blazor WebAssembly gets uh, compiled down all the way to JavaScript. So you can take that JavaScript and put it anywhere. Why not on static web apps? Um, one cool thing about static web apps as well is you can actually specify an API to go along with it and it'll deploy that API out. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a second. Uh, you, one of the great things that I love about static web apps is that you know, CI CD is configured when you build the service in Azure. So what it actually does is it creates a GitHub action for you, puts it into your GitHub repo and starts deploying your app when you actually specify to create the static web app. And honestly, free SSL certs, free SSL certs are super awesome. I don't know if that's gonna stay like that forever. So people on the static web app team don't say, hey, Isaac talked about that, now we gotta take it away. Right now I get free SSL certs. So please take advantage of static web apps if you have value in doing so. So static web apps, let's do this. So here's my repo, right? I'm going to, go to the Azure portal. So I'm going to go to add and then I'm going to search for static web apps. Static web app preview. Zoom in just a little bit. Go to create. I'm going to specify my app name. Let's just call this uh, 11.net comp demo. Sure, why not? And then I'm gonna specify my region in Azure. Skew, it's free, because right now Static Web App is in preview and it's free. That's probably likely to change. I'm gonna sign into GitHub. It's gonna say, do you want this? I said, yes. And I'm gonna log in. And I didn't get two-factor, which is a blessing. So, and then what it does is it actually reads out your GitHub repositories. So I'm gonna choose my personal repository. I'm going to choose the repo itself, which is the .NET Conf demos, and I'm going to specify the branch, which is main. I'm going to click review and create. When this happens, it actually starts to create. Um, what it does is it creates the service in Azure, and then it actually does a git commit. So if I go here and I refresh my page, so if I go GitHub workflows, you see that there's an Azure static web apps file. So it creates a GitHub static app here, right, to do a deployment. So all that stuff is here, and I can actually view it here. I actually didn't change something. This is probably going to break. We act, so the default setup is that it asks you where you want to put your app, your 
actually. Let's just do that again because that I failed miserably in doing that demo. So let's go back and try again. I got a few minutes anyway. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to do the same thing. I do these demos so fast and I end up missing like all sorts of fun things. So I'm just going to call this Isaac.net conf demo. I'm going to choose a region again, and my printer is going off because that's the world that we live in. My apologies, everybody. <laughs> I told my wife that I was presenting, and she's like, I don't care. I need to print stuff. So again, so same thing again. Sorry that I'm going through this again, folks. All right, .NET Conf demos, specify the branch. All right, and then if you keep scrolling down, which I didn't do earlier, it gives you these build presets. So you can specify a handful of different frameworks or stack site generators. I'm gonna choose Blazor, and then I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna point out where that is. So if I go to my code, this shows you the, the location of your code base. So that's in static web app. So if I go static web app, slash client, static web app, slash API, and then www root, and then I create it. Now that will stand up something. Cool. So same thing as before. This one is going to fail. This one is going to fail now. Um, but, you know, that's the world that we live in. Um, so to go back finally and finish out my talk, because I only got five minutes, to summarize, GitHub Actions are a great solution to seamlessly configure your CI CD with your Git if you have already have GitHub repos. Building and deploying .NET Core apps, especially ASP.NET Core apps, is super painless with GitHub provided workflows and that runner that exists inside of the GitHub portal, and as well as being able to view the logs. You have a plethora of custom workflows, including deployment to many Azure services, like I talked about. And Honestly, use GitHub Actions whenever you want to deploy ASP.NET Core to Azure. It's super easy. I showed you three different ways to do it in 20 minutes. So if what's your excuse if you don't? So one thing to call out, I showed you some really, really cool thing about um, Visual Studio being able to generate it. So that's in preview. That's going to um, come out uh, to GA with 16.9, 16.8, actually. Don't quote me on that. But there's also some really other cool things in Visual Studio, like code spaces that you should definitely play around with. And that's my talk. If you have any questions or if you want to take a look at any of the resources that you saw, there's a hot link, um, isaacl.dev slash actions dash dot net dash Azure. Um, I'm going to put this talk in the repo is already available on GitHub. So, yeah, super awesome. Um, if anybody has any questions, Myra, are you there? Yes, and we do have questions. Uh oh. So let's see how. <laughs> uh oh. So one question. Let's see if we can put the board up on the screen. One sure. question from Mitch Kane for: Are GitHub Actions an alternative to Azure pipelines, or do they work together? So you can trigger Azure pipelines from GitHub Actions. Um, you know they both do CI/CD. Um, and to be completely honest, like GitHub Actions kind of runs on the same infrastructure that uh, that that pipelines do. Um, not saying that you should then you should take all of your pipelines and port them over to Azure, like or to GitHub Actions. Like that's probably not in your best interest. Um, use the tool that works best for you. Um, if you're already deeply integrated with Azure DevOps, keep using Azure pipelines. The team is continuing to invest heavily there. Um, just GitHub Actions is going to get better, right? It's still a fairly new tool. Um, and I imagine that as we get further and further along, there's going to be all sorts of fun stuff added to it. So cool. Anything else, Myra? Okay. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, yeah. So will I be able to deploy my apps from GitHub Actions to my target service on premises? We are doing this in Azure DevOps. That's a question from Taj Mahal. Um, So currently, no. Um, currently, there isn't a... Um, a way to act to basically point at that. Um, you can use a self-hosted runner, which could do maybe a step in the way there for you. Um, you could use self-hosted runner or a cloud-hosted runner that puts 
the code somewhere, which you can then maybe have a web hook. So something internally to deploy it. But right now that's not there. Um, you know, I can imagine that's something that's probably coming in the future just because, you know, the team wants to provide a really, really robust um, CI CD um, process for its customers. So, yeah, that's what I got. Awesome. Um, I think we might have time for one last one and then we can. Cool. Super awesome. More questions. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't think we'll have time to show, but um, it's like, can you show us again the, the script to make it have action runs locally? Um, I like link, like in container, so don't, we don't have to do 50 updates, uh, YAML commit. Yeah, so, so it's, it's uh, something. <laughs> yeah, so real quick, um, um, I'll tweet it out, but there's a, there's a GitHub repository um, where a guy wrote a tool that allows you to run GitHub actions locally. Um, so from my experience, it works pretty good um, in WSL. Not as, it doesn't work as good in, in Windows. Um, I, think it's, I think it's Nico slash ACT is what it's called, um, but I'll tweet it out. Um, but yeah, awesome. it allows you to run your GitHub Actions. Yeah, so like based on that gentleman or, or that individual, I, I don't know if it's a gentleman or not, my apologies. Um, you, so you don't have to like say fix, 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 and have like 35 commits um, it allows you to do some testing locally, but yeah, no, I'll tweet that out. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think it was a question from Alexandre. So, okay. okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Isaac. Uh, uh, it was a great session. I learned a lot personally, so hopefully our audience awesome. did too.